Here it comes. <laughs> and Maria is C. Oppenheimer. Dude, hello, my name is Ben Friedman, film critic, and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm talking about the 10 reasons Oppenheimer won Best Picture. Today is March 10th, 9 18 p.m. one recording. I did this last year for Everything Everywhere All at Once. You guys made that a huge sensation. Uh, so I wanted to do it again for Oppenheimer. However, I wanted to do something slightly different. And I want to just give some brief context on exactly what I'm doing differently. So here's what happened. I recorded a video back in November explaining why I thought Oppenheimer was going to win Best Picture. I was going to post it on my channel and then other videos became priority, and this video never became public. I was then re-watching it today after Oppenheimer had won Best Picture, and I'm like, oh, okay, all these points that I talked about are essentially the truth of what I was going to talk about today. So I'm like, instead of shooting a new video that hits that point, I want to talk a little bit about those points. So you're about to see this video that I shot back in November of 2023. Throughout it, I will be giving a few snippets and ideas and expanding on some things within the video, but please enjoy this video that I made, 10 Reasons to Why Oppenheimer Won Best Picture, and you're going to see a lot of trends, I think, and I think these trends in particular will kind of explain how this movie, which was the front runner, which if you know anything about the Oscars, you know you do not want to be the front runner in it, but... Oppenheimer succeeded throughout that, and these are the 10 reasons I think why. So with that all said, let's get into this. We're talking about the 10 reasons Oppenheimer won Best Picture today on my channel. Starting off with number 10, Oppenheimer fits the mold of an Academy Award movie. By that, I mean that this movie is a historical movie. It is a biography of a very famous man who is very important in the history of mankind. It is a period piece. It is a World War II movie. It's all of those aspects that Hollywood has always appreciated in a Best Picture winner. Coming in at number nine, Christopher Nolan is already receiving quite large praise from his peers, who also happens to be the voting body. Director Oliver Stone, who directed JFK, which plays a huge influence in the editing style of Oppenheimer, called Christopher Nolan's film a classic. Denis Villeneuve, the director of Dune, called this film a masterpiece. Paul Thomas Anderson, the director of Boogie Nights and There Will Be Blood, praised this film and its theatrical experience, saying it needs to be seen on a big screen. Despite having some issue with not showing the Japanese perspective of the atomic bomb going off, Spike Lee called Christopher Nolan's film great. Paul Schrader, the famed collaborator and writer with Martin Scorsese of such films as Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, also a director himself, called Christopher Nolan's film the most important film of this century. These are his peers coming out in great support of Christopher Nolan, and this is the Academy that he has to win. And the fact that they are already vouching for him shows that they have a lot of reverence and respect for Christopher Nolan and his craft. I thought those were two excellent points made by myself, if I do say so. And I wanted to jump in because the next reason that I had, it's reason number eight, and I basically equated that the below-the-line support was massive for Oppenheimer. And it was. This film went on to win quite a few below-the-line categories. And one that I wanted to address, because this isn't really changing any of my thoughts that I had for this reason number eight, but I do make the mistake, and I want to call myself out, that I said Oppenheimer was most likely going to get nominated for visual effects, if not even be the front runner in that category. We all know how that played out. That was a weird ding, and I still don't fully understand why this got taken out of the running. I think if I had to ponder, it's because Christopher Nolan put so much emphasis on this film being shot practically. And I think to some voters, they hear the word practically and they think, well, that can't be a visual effect. Even though visual effects is talking about everything, including computer and the trickery behind camera. That is my reason. And that's the only uh, thing that I wanted to jump in before you continue on with this video, because that is incorrect. And it was a really weird thing that Oppenheimer did not get a visual effect nomination. But back to me. 
Reason number eight that Oppenheimer will win Best Picture is it has below the line support. Below the line is everyone who is involved in the film that are not the big names like the actors, the writers, the directors. These are everyone who works on the film. In a lot of cases, they're the technicians. They're the ones who compose the music. They edit, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at Oppenheimer, this film is going to have a lot of nominations. It is going to have nominations, presumably, in visual effects, film editing, makeup and hairstyling, cinematography, production design, sound, score. Those are a handful of categories that I would even say Oppenheimer is maybe the front runner at this moment or at least a heavy contender within them. That means he will have below the line support. And when they are choosing the movie, they likely will go for the films that they supported themselves. The reason number seven Oppenheimer will win Best Picture is it has above the line support. If you look at the categories that Oppenheimer will most likely be nominated for in the above the line categories, you have adapted screenplay, you have supporting actress for Emily Blunt, you have supporting actor for Robert Downey Jr., you have best actor for Killian Murphy, and you have best director for Christopher Nolan, showing that there is going to be a large contingency of support going in Oppenheimer's favor. This film is for sure going to get a nomination in the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Ensemble. And Best Ensemble, if you look at the past 10 years of the Best Ensemble race, this has predicted the winner of the Best Picture 50% of the times. They got it wrong five years. They got it wrong the year they selected Trial of the Chicago 7 instead of Nomadland. They selected Black Panther instead of Green Book that year. They selected three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. They also selected Hidden Figures instead of Moonlight. And they selected American Hustle instead of 12 Years a Slave. So they are 50%. But however, do note that three of those five movies that I just listed, three of them, the films that ended up winning Best Picture, were not even nominated. So Oppenheimer is for sure going to be nominated for the Ensemble Award for SAG. And it's most likely going to win it just due to the huge size of the cast and how much each character gets to stand out in this film. The Academy is made up of largely actors. If you look at the Academy in 2020, they had 8,469 members. 1,324 of them were actors, meaning they made up 16% of the Academy they are the largest branch by far within the Academy. To win, you need the actor support since they are such a huge branch. Reason number six that Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer will win Best Picture is because of the theatrical experience of Oppenheimer. If you remember, Christopher Nolan was preaching IMAX and seeing this movie in the best possible format, 70 millimeter. There was that story early on of the 16 mile reel. That is promotion for this. Just the honoring of the theatrical experience, kind of this dying art of cinema and where the Academy has been a little hesitant to go full on streamers the past few years where they really haven't awarded a lot of streaming movies. I could easily see the Academy going for a film that preaches the love of cinema and seeing it in the best format possible and promoting the theatrical experience. Hey, it's me again. You just heard me talking about above the line support for this film. And I wanted to add one quick thought to that. And that is the support this film got from Robert Downey Jr. I think the charisma of Robert Downey Jr. rubbed off on everyone in this film. I think particular Christopher Nolan did a great job campaigning for this movie. And I thought he had just a little bit of that uh, Robert Downey Jr. humor and edge to him in his uh, press and all the interviews that he did leading up to Oppenheimer and in its campaign trail. I just think that helped this movie connect with actors because obviously there's always been a criticism on Nolan that he can be a little bit cold and I don't think people thought of him as a funny person and I think this award season really changed that and I think that helped him connect with uh, the actors branch and really just helped build momentum and combated that front runner fatigue that I think people might have been expecting with Oppenheimer. So that was just a quick aside and we'll be right back to reason number 
five. Reason number five, and I actually think this is a sneakily good reason this film could win Best Picture, is simply Christopher Nolan himself. Christopher Nolan has never won an Academy Award. He's been nominated five times in the past. Once in 2002 for Memento, he was nominated for Best Original Screenplay. He was nominated twice for Inception, including Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay. And he was nominated twice for Dunkirk, once for Best Picture, once for Best Director. I believe this year he will receive three nominations. The reason I just believe this is sometimes it just becomes due. This director has meant so much to this industry for handful of years now he's really is probably the most important director of the 21st century that is all going to play in his favor and the narrative of christopher nolan winning his oscar reason number four that oppenheimer will win best picture and i don't mean to sound crass with this one however this is just how studios market a film when they're trying to win best picture they want to signify the importance of this movie and play into this idea of a narrative and it being such a culturally important film existing in this moment with what is going on in Russia and Ukraine, what is going on in Israel and Palestine, this movie of Oppenheimer feels extremely urgent in our larger national scale discussion and our geopolitical identity. And I believe that is going to help propel Oppenheimer to win a best picture the fact that it's going to be in conversation and it's such an important movie the fact that you had Joe Biden our president talking about seeing this movie and just you know the experience of seeing it and the responsibility all that of nuclear power I just see this being a bigger larger talking point my favorite parts of the video and I'm about to talk about the counter arguments why Oppenheimer may lose now obviously in retrospect it won. We all know that. It's March 10th. We know who won uh, the Best Picture Prize. However, I talk about the counter argument, and it's never good to be the front runner, is kind of how I described it. And I actually believe that counter narrative helped Oppenheimer because as it kind of just kept chugging along, it was kind of just becoming clear like nothing's taking it down. Like there is no other front runner. Like this is just so monumentous that this is the obvious winner and it's just going to be one of those years like return of the king like the slumdog millionaire year where it's just like oh this is going to do this this is going to be big and get ready so i thought i kept this counter narrative in because i thought it was an interesting argument and exercise to do and it's also fascinating to then see how oppenheimer was able to combat this counter argument so Get ready for this, the counter argument. Okay, before I get into my top three reasons, I just want to give the counter narrative to everything that I just said. Here is the reason that Oppenheimer could potentially not win Best Picture. And it is all revolving around the strikes that have happened the past six months. The reason this is so important is because Oppenheimer came out basically right before the actors went on strike allowing people like Robert Downey Jr., Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, all these actors to go on promotion, talk about this film, talk about working with Christopher Nolan. What this allowed was the conversation to go even as those actors were on strike. Since then, the actors have been on strike and they haven't been able to promote their movies for the large part. A lot of these actors just haven't been out there yet. Thus, promotion is going to start kickstarting 12.02 on November 9th. The exact second this strike is over, you're going to see Emma Stone promote and pour things. You're going to see a lot more of Paul Giamatti out there for the holdovers. You're going to see Annette Benning out there for Nyad. You're going to see all these actors and actresses coming out to just praise their movie. You'll see Margot Robbie having a lot more interviews because of her role as producer and actress in Barbie. It is inevitable. Thus, that could be the counter narrative working against Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is clearly the front runner. And typically in the past few years, you do not want to be the front runner in the awards race. Last year, you said Fablemans was probably the front runner going into November. The year before, The Power of the Dog. Trial of the Chicago 7 at one point. Before that, you had The Irishman. All these movies that were seen as it, 
ended up having the counter narrative, the push, and then the campaign goes. There are great stories from Oscar Wars, which is a book that I highly recommend, but the counter narrative is coming for Oppenheimer and this could derail it. Going back to the more positive reason number three that Oppenheimer will win Best Picture is its box office performance. This is a film that was made on $100 million and it has grossed at this point $948 million. It is going to get a re-release before the end of 2023. And that re-releases because they want that billion. Universal wants this movie out there for $1 billion gross. They want to see that be in front of Oppenheimer's gross. And thus, they're going to push it. And a film that makes a billion dollars that is this culturally significant, that is this acclaim, that's all just working in Christopher Nolan's favor right now. Reason number two, Oppenheimer wins. And I just hinted to it, but it is the critical and commercial success this film has. This film was a huge hit with critics, and it was also a huge hit with audiences. This film was universally loved upon release. That is something working in favor of the movie. The Academy does like selecting movies that play well and that have a large crowd, and it does seem, and we have to remember this, that the Academy is a business, and it's also a show. People are more likely going to tune in if a film they know is well rewarded. Thus, Oppenheimer being the film that a lot of people saw, that a lot of people love, that is just good television. And I believe it's going to play out. Last year, Everything Everywhere All at Once was a huge commercial success with audiences. And finally, reason number one that Oppenheimer will win Best Picture. It's just the most talked about movie of the year. The Barbenheimer effect was big for this movie. I really do believe it earned this film a lot more money opening weekend because of this phenomenon. Barbie and Oppenheimer are going hand in hand there. It's the biggest story of Hollywood this year. It's the, almost to a degree, the little movie that could. I get that neither film was little, but the fact that they, how they boosted each other up, just the narrative of that, just how it saved Hollywood, how it gave so much power to a director to the actors all of that it just kind of showed a counter narrative towards superhero movies and the blockbusters that had come out for the past few years which were underperforming consistently in the summer this was a movie made on a reasonable budget made by an incredibly smart director made with an incredibly talented cast and all of that And the fact of how much this movie has been discussed, how much it's been written about, how much it's been in the conversation, the IMAX experience of it all. The fact that it became a cultural phenomenon is important. And that is why I am picking as of November 8th, about 7.45 p.m. now, that is why I'm picking Oppenheimer to win Best Picture. So we'll come back in a few months and we'll see if I think I'm crazy wrong. And there we have it. Oppenheimer comes out on top. I am proven right. Once again, I shouldn't take that much solace because my Oscar ballot this year was a mess. Uh, Who saw the poor things uh, win for Emma Stone happening? That was truly shocking. John Mulaney should be the host next year. That's another big takeaway I had from the award show. And the wrong Barbie song won because the I'm Just Ken performance was sensational. Overall, a great year for the Academy Awards. I thought it was a really good show. It came in at under three and a half hours, which that seems like a record for the past decade or two of it. I think the ceremony was a bunch of fun and I am glad to have been able to talk about the Oscars. So join me in the next few days. I'll be talking about what the Academy Awards ceremony should look like, ways to fix it and just kind of get more viewership in it. And then Thursday, I'm talking about way too early predictions for next year's Academy Awards. So thank you all for this award season for continuing to subscribe. If you want, please consider subscribing to help me. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2024. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. My name is Ben Friedman. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.